Bem-vindo ao episódio 22 da segunda temporada do Elenco de Cris. Benvenuti all'episodio 22 della seconda stagione del cast di Cris. Willkommen zu Staffel 2, Folge 22 von Chris Cast. Bienvenue dans l'épisode 22 de la saison 2 du casting de Chris. Bienvenido al episodio 22 de la temporada 2 del elenco de Chris. Welcome to season 2, episode 22 of Chris Cast. My name is Chris Abraham and I'm happy to have you here. Today's episode is going to be about sleep and how I've learned so much from my Fitbit uh, and its sleep tracking. And I've also learned a lot from going to sleep studies and getting and using a BiPAP and uh, other types of things associated being with someone who um, is obese, someone who has a history of heart disease someone who is medicated for heart disease, someone who is historically a heavy snorer, uh, to the chagrin of all of my lovers, and uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I hope you find this interesting. I hope I have some insight uh, if I show a spotlight into what I've learned, and maybe that'll help you a little bit. Um, mind you, I'm not a doctor. Mind you, I'm not a doctor, and that is my uh, hit timer. So in about two minutes and 20 seconds, another beep will happen. So, uh, pardonnez-moi, s'il vous plaît. Lo siento. Um, we'll be right back. Oh, I'm not a doctor. Uh, this is just my experience. I'm not doing any... Well, I might ask uh, Google and, uh, and Echo... Uh, for some advice if I do, you know, you, you know, that's how I do, but I'm not a doctor. This is only my experience. You can glean from it what you may, but I bear no liability for your decisions. Uh, it is your life. It is my life. It is life. It is our life. It is our sleep. And I'll talk to you after the advertisement. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Um, what I didn't mention before, as this is season two, episode 22 of Chris Cast, is that uh, I didn't find out until a couple years ago that I had sleep apnea. And sleep apnea is a killer. Hey Google, how dangerous is sleep apnea? Here's a summary from the website mayoclinic.org. Sleep apnea increases your risk of high blood pressure. Obstructive sleep apnea might also increase your risk of recurrent heart attack, stroke, and abnormal heartbeats. Such as atrial fibrillation. So, I've always had it, I think, because that's that sound, you know, when you're snoring. You know, that's when you... you uh... Hey, Google, what is the definition of sleep apnea? Hey, Google, what is the definition of sleep apnea? According to Mayo Clinic, a potentially serious sleep disorder in which breathing repeatedly stops and starts. So, uh, back in 2016, 2017, I uh, almost died. Uh, no big deal. And it had to do with heart failure. Um, I got tachycardia. And I didn't treat it, and then it fell into arrhythmia and atrial fibrillation. And um, my heart was so completely exhausted that uh, eventually I went to a 
doctor. At that point, I was still um, morbidly obese. I was not treated. I was un, uh, non uh, compliant with any medical treatment for high blood pressure, uh, for um, anything. And uh, when I eventually went to the doctor to a clinic, he did an EKG on me and then sent me straight to the doc straight straight to the hospital. I could do it either uh, in an Uber or in an ambulance, and I chose an Uber. So I went to uh, I went to Alexandria Hospital, which was awesome. Um, and uh, over the course of going back into um, into treatment for uh, everything. I ended up, uh, so I had been recommended to go to a uh, sleep study uh, before, um, but I thought that was stupid. And secondly, I didn't know anybody who had a BiPAP or a CPAP machine, and it seemed really unsexy. And as a single guy, um, I refused. Uh, little did I know that I was killing myself. Every time I went to sleep, I was getting terrible sleep. I was waking myself up. And I was putting myself at risk for stroke, heart attack, and AFib, which is what I actually got. What is that noise? It's outside. I hope you don't hear it. It's terrible. Um, so... After that, I went in and out of... I So I recovered. It took 10 days and I died for three minutes. But I didn't need any stints. I didn't need any surgery. I didn't need any invasive... Uh, they didn't need to crack my chest. They didn't even need to go ahead and cut me open at all, even to do any explorative stuff. It was all situational, but it's been a long hoe back. Um, so... Uh, What is that noise? Anyway, so finally, when I went into treatment, I started treating my sleep, uh, my 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 blood pressure. Uh, started, I got a cardio version. I got into a bunch of uh, drugs, one of which is called Ticosin, Ticosin, which was amazing to keep me in sinus rhythm. I gave up drinking on uh, March eleventh, twenty twenty. Um, I gave up eating after 6 p.m. I mostly gave up, um, you know, Italian food. I wonder if you can hear that. It's so... I will take a break, go see what that is, and I'll be right back. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is Chris Cast Season 2, Episode 22. Uh, the Sleeping Sleep Apnea CPAP uh, Killing Me Softly With My Snores, Killing Me Softly With My Snores um, episode. That noise was me. It was my, I have a, a Bose, uh, a big... Um, uh, off-white and gold Bose acoustic um, radio slash CD player. And it's connected to my Chromecast and connected to my uh, to my um, XM radio. And it was just humming. I think Google did that. But uh, so that was that. Anyway, so I started complying and went to all these things and um, ended up getting a, uh, a year ago, getting a, a, uh, air curve 10 ASV BiPAP machine by, um, res resmed. And it's been amazing. Uh, I sleep like a Yogi every night and that in connection with my Fitbit, which is the Voisian. It's the Voisian. What version are you? It is the Charge 4. Um, it, 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 it 
does it tracks things such as comment dire tracks things such as quality of sleep so last night i got a fair which is a 75 out of 100 my time asleep was 8 hours and 6 minutes though i was in bed for another 1 hour and 20 21 minutes of sleep so one of the things i want to talk about today is time in bed is not equal to time asleep time in bed is not equal to time asleep so if you say to me that you got eight hours of sleep last night, that doesn't mean that you were in bed for eight hours. It means that uh, your Fitbit or whatever you're using, whether it's a, a, a Polar or a Garmin or, a, a, um, or whatever your tracker is, a Wahoo, Yahoo, um, it needs to say that you were, in, you were asleep for eight hours and six minutes. It tells me deep and REM sleep. So I got uh, one hour and 30 minutes, 8% was deep sleep. And my restoration was 13 out of 25. I had only 2% below resting and 9% restlessness, uh, which is funny because lately I've been, you know, lately uh, I have uh, been 77% below resting. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, so so getting that level of sleep, you know, potentially spending nine or ten hours in bed per night, which is, you know, close to half a day, or as they say, um, I think half a day um, is, uh, is Guamanian uh, for uh, Aloha. Anyway, so for half a day, almost half a day, um, I'm... I'm got my eyes closed. I'm at rest because I know that my life is better when I am asleep, not in bed, asleep for seven or eight hours. Um, so that's really important. You know, you don't think about that. Like I know friends who toss and turn all night and if they, if they put in the hours into bed, like into sleeping, they feel like that they've had enough restoration, but it's different between lying in bed uh, and being asleep. I want you to remember that. Also, I just hung out with the Navy SEAL the other day, who's in his 30s, and he's on a CPAP machine. I think everybody should be on CPAP machines if they need them. Um, they're not loud. They don't breathe like some sort of TV show doctor bellows. Like, they don't go, <gasps> they're really quiet, and they're a hell, hell of a lot quieter than um uh than sleep apnea or snoring or whatever um and and you've got a mask over your face so even if you make some noise at sleep uh it'll be muffled i think that every woman should encourage her husband to take a sleep apnea test to take a sleep test and to find out whether or not a cpap which only respirates um uh, only clears the Hey, Google, what is the difference between a CPAP and a BiPAP? On the website sleepassociation.org, they say, like CPAP, this sleep apnea treatment works by sending air through a tube into a mask that fits over the nose. While CPAP generally delivers a single pressure, BiPAP delivers two, an inhale pressure and an exhale pressure. So my BiPAP literally breathes for me. It is, it is literally um, a selective fire, semi-automatic, um, um, oh, what is the term for um, those things everybody is taking? A respirator. It is, it is a semi-automatic uh, computerized respirator. So uh, it doesn't breathe every breath for me, but if it sees that I'm I'm not in my normal rhythm of breathing in and out. It, uh, it not only uh, presses a breath into me, but then it also it, 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 it breathes for me until I'm back into kind of a sinus breathing rhythm. Um, and uh, it's smart. It, and, and what's even better, I'm an allergic person, so I'm constantly having bronchial inflammation. So it also filters the air 
it um, there's uh, you have uh, there's a receptacle for water. You fill it with water so it, it hydrates your lungs and hydrates you so you don't get all dried out. And secondarily, there's a HEPA filter that makes sure that all the breath going in and out of your lungs is filtered from um, environmental uh, detritus. So essentially, every breath I get is purified air while I'm asleep. So not only does it prevent, um, not only does it prevent sleep apnea, proactively, but it makes sure that I do yogic breathing all night. It, um, it, it takes some adapting, but once you get used to it, uh, you get pretty used to it and, uh, it filters out all detritus and all, um, all, uh, everything that makes me feel, uh, that gives me sniffles that I take, uh, Zyrtec, Zeralto, Zyrtec, Zyrtec for. Um, and so it's, it's amazing. Um, but uh it also my my uh my fitbit also tracks uh some amazing other things which is to say it tracks health metrics too so my breathing rate is uh breaths per minute is around 13 breaths per minute my heart rate variability is like 20, uh, seven milliseconds. Uh, my breathing heart rate is 13 breaths per minute. My skin temperature is minus 2.2 Fahrenheit, whatever that means. My oxygen sa uh, saturation is, last night was 95%. And my resting heart rate was uh, 58 beats per minute. So um, I will talk tomorrow about the issue of um, dealing with the fact that while the body is amazingly healing, it can't heal unless you give it time and the and the um, the break that it requires to self heal. So, um, by taking the drugs required to make sure that my blood pressure is low, that my heart rate is low, my resting heart rate is low, that my heart is in sinus rhythm, and that I get plenty of sleep thanks to the BiPAP and prioritizing sleep in my life. I have taken, I have lowered the revs, the, the revs of my engine sufficiently so that the possibility of an extreme blowout of the engine blowing or throwing a rod or exploding or, or imploding has been reduced. But not only that, by um, in a self-healing environment, uh, removing stress, as they say, by virtue of rest, rest days, um, by uh, having a low blood pressure, by having a low resting pulse rate, by having my heart in sinus rhythm, and also by having enough walking and enough movement and enough flexibility and so forth, um, I allow my body the ability to rest, truly rest and recover so that my, the muscles of my heart can, uh, can, can recover and become stronger. I don't constantly keep them at full, full court boogie. And as a result, they have a t a, a, the chance to become stronger, more efficient, and uh, more durable over time. So you can recover, uh, but you can't. You won't recover unless you're able to allow recovery. Um, I will talk about in in a next episode. In a following episode, I will talk about uh, the next decision in my recovery uh, is getting rid of a hundred and. 150 pounds of, of fat, um, preferably 50 pounds, 100, 100 pounds, but, you know, ideally 150 pounds that I could, I could lose. And, uh, that's literally a, uh, a, a, a five foot 10, uh, that is literally the amount of weight that a five foot, uh, eight, five foot nine, five foot 10, 40 regular man weighs, um, 
uh, or an honest, or a woman honest about her weight, but um, bump. So that is my next goal. And my cardiologist, Doctor Lux, and his team gave me an amazing, um, an amazing pathway for that. So I will talk about that in a following episode. I'll be back to close up the episode and. Um, uh, uh, thank you for your time. I don't know if this made any sense, but hopefully all of my, my conversations are about starting conversations, brain dumps. I'm really only doing this for myself and my 18 to, let's see how many followers, how many listeners I have. You are one of my favorites, but you're also, uh, one of... Um, an estimated audience of 40. So you should be proud. You're, you're an exclusive, you're, you're part of an exclusive group. Um, and I'm much obliged. Anyway, I'll be right back to you after a second to close out. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. My name's Chris Abraham, this is Chris Cast, Season 2, Episode uh, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, uh, um, uh, is it, um, is it, uh, yikes, I completely forget, um, uh, Schweitzen, Schweitzen, Ein Schweitzen, hey Google, what is the German word, for, hey Google, what is the German word for 20? In German, that's 20. 20. What else should I translate? No, no, that's fine, stop. Sure, I'll stop translating. Zwanzig. Zwanzig. Zweiun zwanzig. Zweiun zwanzig. Zweiun zwanzig. Hey, Google, is zweiun zwanzig the German word for 22? I don't know, but I found these results on search. Hey, Google, what's the German word for 22? In German, that's 22. 22. What else should I translate? Stop. Got it. I'll stop translating. She's actually got a really good German accent. That 20 is 20 is 20 is really hard. 22. So, anyway, my name's Chris Abraham. You know that. You can reach me at plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. You can text me, WhatsApp me, signal me, um, telegram me. Uh, you can try to call me at 202-352-5051. But if we don't have a previous date, I'm not going to pick up. You can leave a message, though, via Google. Um, it'll go through Google Voice, be translated into text, and I will respond to that. If you want to make a play date with me via the phone, I'm at calendly.com slash Chris Abraham. Uh, you found me via a million different um, podcast platforms, but my home one is anchor.fm slash Chris Abraham. Um, uh, I'm at Chris Abraham on Twitter, at Chris Abraham on Instagram, at Chris Abraham on Facebook, at Chris Abraham on YouTube. Uh at Chris Abraham on LinkedIn. If you know how to do it, it's slash in slash Chris Abraham. And that might be it. Uh, you can reach me at Chris at Abraham dot SU. Uh, you can reach me at CJA at well dot com. You can reach me at C Abraham at gmail dot com. You can reach me at Chris at Garris dot com. That is my company, Garris dot com which is also G-E-R-R dot I-S. It is a pleasure to interact with you. 
Uh, if you have uh, questions, comments, or if you have an idea for a podcast episode, I would appreciate it. Secondly, uh, thirdly and fourthly, please, whatever your home podcast platform is, please like, subscribe, and comment and star me. I think that helps. Um, maybe we can get up to 41 listeners. That would be fine. I'm really not, I'm really not doing this for you. I'm doing this for me. Um, but I'm happy to share it along the way. My best friends uh, generally don't even listen. Like, people just, nobody cares. I'm just, uh, I'm just dust in the wind. I'm just dust in the wind. But alas, I will talk to you guys soon. Um, I'm going to do a couple episodes right after this, so I'm on a roll. Ciao for now. Auf Wiedersehen. Adios. Bye.